Okay, so when we're dealing with denial, the issue is not really denial. The issue is readiness to change on the part of the individual. So that goes back to what I was saying about protesters. They, you know, you think it's adequate to hold up a sign and say, I'm angry that it's this way and someone needs to fix it. That's the equivalent of a drunk saying, somebody real or do something about this alcohol problem. There's no readiness to change there. There's no ownership of the fact that we all swim in the same water and that we all contribute to it in some way, shape or form. The issue is the motivation, once we identify ways to make a change, is the motivation to persevere. So anytime that we step out of our comfort zone, um, going to be a big brother or big sister, let's say for example, persevering and following through on that is a challenge. I mean, at first we're upset and we're angry, so we're motivated by that anger, but as the anger subsides, what is gonna keep us moving through? And so in order to change and persevere, we need to have a vision. I was talking in an earlier broadcast about Martin Luther King Jr. and his vision. We need a vision akin to that, a vision of a world where people are judged for how they behave and nothing else, if they're judged at all. The issue when we're in denial is access to help. Get, who do we turn to to help us make those commitments and follow through them? And personally, I think that therapists and coaches are a great source for help if you have the money for them. Um, if they're, if, but a better source for help would be to get together in a group that wants to promote change and take action within that group. The issue is lack of alternatives and options.